it's not gonna work with that running. <laughs> Hello hobbyists, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James with another quick tip. Today we're gonna to be talking about a watt meter, namely an, a watt meter that's gonna be used in RC electric aircraft. Now what is a watt meter? A watt meter is a device that can measure basically the electrical power or the electrical properties of any given electrical circuit. You can use them on anything powered by electricity, but in the case of uh, RC electric aircraft, we're gonna use it in our terms. So for the most part, what you're gonna be reading is how your different LiPo batteries will uh, work with an ESC attached to a typical RC motor. In this case, we have an EDF fan, um, again, an ESC or electronic speed controller, and we have a couple LiPo batteries, because in this video, we're gonna not only show you all the different readouts that a watt meter can give you, but then we're gonna run a couple of examples. Now, why would you want an RC watt meter? Basically, in our hobby, lots of people tend to wanna change out propellers, they wanna change out motors, they wanna run different batteries in a given electric air aircraft um, and they're always asking those questions hey can it work with this propeller usually they're trying to achieve more performance well the beauty of having a watt meter is you don't have to ask those questions because you'll be able to know for sure if your uh, system that you want to put in your aircraft is going to be able to fly that aircraft well. Um, obviously, one thing a watt meter real quick can do is, let's say you want put on a different propeller, it could pull more amps, and if your electronic speed controller is rated for, let's say, 60 amps, but your new propeller pulls 70, then your electronic speed controller is not gonna like that. It can burn out in the air, and you can lose that, your motor, and your plane all at once. So the beauty of about a watt meter is it, it's an insurance policy to help save you when you want to make these changes. So let's get started. So first things first, you see I have my uh, very rudimentary rigging system, but let's get it plugged in. So you see on the GT Power uh, watt meter that you see the source and a load. So basically, when you get this out, your uh, you don't have any connectors that are soldered on. You have to do that yourself with this. So I just soldered on EC5s because that's what I typically use the most. Um, so for that purpose, you could solder on any connectors you want, but you're always gonna plug your battery in through the source side because that's the source of the power for this current. And then the load side is gonna be your motor and your ESC because that's what's going to put the load on the source. So uh, let's get it plugged in and I will start by plugging in my load first. I'm going to turn on my transmitter. Again, I just have a receiver and all that's plugged into it is the throttle lead to run the motor and the BEC to power the receiver. Now I'm gonna get started with the 40C uh, LiPo battery. We have the Admiral 4000. We wanted two batteries that were the same, so 4000 milliamp power each. They both have six cells, but one is 40C and one is 60C, so we'll be able to get a readout of how these two batteries will affect the same given ESC setup. So I'm gonna plug in this one battery, and you hear it it turns on, it powers the system. Now, looking at the uh, GT Power uh, setup, you are going to see uh, a couple different things. There are four different measurements here. So we're gonna start in the top left corner. So the top left corner is gonna show us what our amps are. Right now it's reading 0.1, we haven't turned on the system, but that's gonna give us our uh, amp reading and our current, and that's gonna be in real time. So when I power this baby up, you are gonna see this number uh, increase. On the right side, we have our voltage. So right now we have 24.8 volts. Basically, each cell in a LiPo battery, when it's fully charged, is 4.2 volts. So we have six cells in this LiPo, so 4.2 times six would be a 25.2 uh, max voltage that we could get. So right there, we're about right, 24.8. And then the bottom right-hand corner, that's gonna be uh, measure your power. So you're gonna see right now we have 2.4 watts, but again, all these numbers will change uh, as we run up the system. So then at the bottom left hand corner, this is gonna give you a couple of maximum peak readouts uh, after you've ran the system. So we'll talk about these after uh, we run her up for the first time. So I say, let's do that now. All right, so everything's set up. We are all powered. Let's run up our fan for a little bit and you can see the readouts in real time. <laughs> So 
So now, when you saw it power up, it was tough to read here, but we're pulling about 90 amps, is what I saw on the top, uh, top left corner. You saw our voltage in our packs immediately decrease, and that will decrease over time as the uh, life of the battery starts to drain. So that makes sense. Now we're at 24.2, whereas we were at a 24.8. And then you saw the maximum wattage. Wattage is just going to be your amps times your volts in real time. So that's your total power through the system. And watts is a good thing to measure because it really comes down to the weight of your aircraft. You want, let's say, about 100 watts per pound to fly a plane. So um, typically, and different planes, you want different settings, like you, a trainer plane would be less wattage, or a 3D plane, something you want to hover, will need more wattage. That's a whole nother video. But now we want to talk about the far bottom left side, like we said, and show you the readouts, because these are going to give us our peak readouts. You don't want to unplug this system yet until you get uh, some of these measurements, and especially the most important ones. The first one we see is 96.67 AP. So that was our peak amps that we consumed in this system. So 96 amps, that means if I was using an ESC, let, let's say, that uh, could only support 80 amps, I would burn out that ESC. In our case, I have a 150 amp ESC because I didn't want to burn anything out. But that means for a system like this, a 1900 kV brushless outrunner motor on a 6S system, we're going to need at least a 100 amp ESC to make sure we never go over it. And then watt power. It was 2,058 watt power. That's WP. And that's your max wattage detected since you turn this system on. So obviously, when we ran it up, um, that was our max wattage. So I know if I needed, if I had a 20 pound plane and I wanted 100 uh, watts per pound, then I know this system would be able to fly it. Now being that this is the type of unit we put in five pound airplanes, you could imagine uh, the performance you're gonna get on a system like this. The next one is gonna be WH, which is your watt hours. So that showed a 5.9 uh, WH which means we were getting uh, 5.9 watts consumed over time since we turned this on. And obviously, since we ran it up, that was the most watts. It's barely consuming anything when it's sitting here doing nothing. We're not putting a load on the system. And then your AH, which is your amp hours, is the same thing. That's going to be your, your amp hours over time. So that was 0.29 amp hours over time. And then you saw 19.77 VM, that's your voltage minimum, but that will show you the minimum voltage uh, over time since you've turned it on. All right guys, so that was a circuit on a 4040C pack uh, put through a 1900 kV motor with a 12 blade EDF fan on our 150 amp ESC. And the two big numbers really for me are the max wattage and the max amperage. You know, uh, for the most part when you're changing a system, you those numbers in RC context are going to be the most important because you want to make sure your ESC is rated enough to carry those amps. And uh, if depending on the weight, if you're flying ARFs or balsa aircraft, weight is a big thing. You want to know if your power, uh, your total watt power is going to be able to move that weight. But now let's just do an example. We're going to unplug our 40C pack and try it with a 60C. So now plugging it in, basically you're seeing all the same uh, numbers here. Nothing's going to change on this menu. We're about 24.8 where the other one was, 24.76. Nothing's going to be fully perfect, but I'm going to run this up and let's see what the readouts are on this battery. So now guys, you can see just by the readouts on this number, when we compare it to the same pack, but with a less of a C rating, we got up to 2200 uh, watt powers, WP, and over 101 amps. So it's pulling more amps, pushing more wattage, more power through the system, which is, you know, just one of the reasons people prefer sometimes a higher C rating when they're flying their EDFs. You feel like you get more punch, and you do.
All right, so that was just a test, a rudimentary test of two different C-rated batteries. But now what happens if I use the same battery uh, and put in a different blade? Because that's a big thing with RC, especially with a propeller. I didn't want to do a propeller for this demonstration. It's a little more dangerous uh, setting up something like this. I like that my fan is housed in a shroud here. But basically, we're going to try this nine-blade fan on the exact same motor, the exact same setup. But all I have to do is I want to re-top off this battery to make sure it's fully charged so it's a constant and it's a good comparison to what we just did. All right, we've topped off our 60C 4000 uh, milliamp pack and we've replaced the 12 blade uh, fan with a nine bladed uh, fan in here. Again, everything else is equal. Same 1900 kV outrunner motor. So let's get it plugged in. And you can see the initial, we have the 24.8 volts. So basically we're working on the same premise. Now I'm gonna run this system up and let's see what the readouts and how they compared to the 12 blade. Right, so running the nine blade, um, you could see that our max watt power was about 2287 uh, watts through the system and our max amperage went up to about 102. So very similar to the 12 blade, maybe that wasn't the best example if you had different pitch props, if you were using a, doing this with a propeller aircraft, um, you would definitely see a difference depending on the diameter of the prop, the pitch of the prop, uh, the motor. But Basically, we hope it's a good demonstration here of just what a watt meter does and why it could be so important for any RC hobbyist, especially guys who are into the ARFs or kit building. You want to know when you have an all-up weight on an aircraft, what power system is going to be right for you. And also, if you're somebody who just wants to upgrade and make those changes to try to get more performance, a watt meter is going to help get it done. So guys, if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to leave them in the comment section of this video. Video. We hope this helps you out. The GT Watt Meter is an awesome, uh, the GT Power Watt Meter is just an awesome tool for anyone, and the link to that's going to be in the description of this video, as well as anything else used. So, guys, if you have any ideas for any more tips, leave them in the comment section, and we'll see you next time with another quick tip.